Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, get ready for Gnosis. Well, I want to cover the satanic uh, rock band Rush. Now, there's been some talk that they really weren't satanic, that they were just a bunch of Canadian goofballs in the 70s doing their thing, and apparently fairly well appreciated, selling over 40 million records worldwide by 205. Uh, and were very big and in the 70s when they initially came out. They are Canadians, and um, they were, as I mentioned, popular. And I'm not going to get into all that stuff uh, of uh, their basic. Let's go through their very interesting um, albums. 1975, and it's hard to believe anybody's still following these people or they have a fan base, considering this is a long time ago. You're talking about, what is it, 20? 45 years ago, uh, when their main uh, records came out. Uh, now, they started off uh, with an album in 1975, and uh, we'll show you, uh, while I'm speaking here, I'll try and um, put up the different album covers. But Fly By Night was their major album. And, you know, they claim to be philosophers. They claim to be into stuff like this as well. So the fact is, this is the 1970s, people. Occultism is huge. Wishcraft is exploding. Everybody's taken the dope. And apparently they were very well known, uh, so it has been alleged, to take all sorts of LSD and hallucinogens. So they were in that, which is very common at that particular time. But this has been noted with them. The name Rush is still in um, question of where that came from. Some people think um, the story they give of how they use that name from nowhere doesn't make much sense to me. They basically pulled it out of their hat, um, and you would think they would be giving some thought to this, and I think they gave a lot of thought to it. This was a typical uh, seven early 70s type glam band, long hair, tight um, very long hair, tight outfits, very much of that look, uh, which is something I've never found very pleasing. Hard to believe that anybody follows these kind of people in general in modern times, but I guess to each his own, but you got to wonder about that. But, you know, Rush, uh, the way they claim they just pop that name out of their hat in some place, I find hard to believe. Most bands spend a lot of time figuring out their name and what they want to use it for. After all, this is a professional name they're going to use forever. Many people have rumored that Rush is an acronym for Ruled Under Satan's Hand. I think that's probably a better explanation for these people. Plain and simple. I mean, their album covers, the names of their songs, and everything else are heavily occult-oriented. In a time when it was very common, in a time where everybody was reading Aleister Crowley, was involved in witchcraft, and this was a big way of bringing women in, uh, where they used all sorts of symbolism, and that's what was happening at that time. I, I think it's difficult to escape it. Their first album, uh, Fly By Night, uses the classic a symbol of a owl. Now, owls have been linked in their negative way to Satanism as uh, animals of the night that hunt. And, you know, they are carnivorous. They are very good for the environment. They eat rodents, etc. Uh, so uh, this is what it looks like. And it's a huge album. Uh, on the album cover is a picture of this giant owl. Now, I could probably go through and find other images within the picture, but I'm not going to try and... Uh, pull it apart. I really don't have time. They're not worth it. I'm doing this because people need to wake up. And when people who are supporters of them claim to be researchers into Satanism, I have to wonder, are they Satanists themselves? Well, I think so, but that's another issue. Uh, they are heavy metal on top of it. They go through different stages. Now, some people are going to say it's not hard rock. Heavy metal is how their um, album. So, would this be unusual that a heavy metal group in the 70s would have some sort of cult symbolism? Well, it certainly would. Maurice Terry, the famous author of The Ultimate Evil on uh, Son of Sam, uh, David Berkowitz, 
uh, labeled them as a satanic band. And while their music and a lot of their cuts are not, and they're not so blatant as ACDC and other groups, uh, these are people that followed and are interested in heavy metal and all that kind of pseudo-Satanism uh, that goes with that. So... Uh, while some heavy metal music I enjoy, some of the songs are good, the, um, this image of all this blackness and Satanism is not good for anyone. So well, we do need to, to understand that. And their music has changed quite a bit from that. So, um, but there is a giant owl on the cover. Plain and simple. There's no way to say that. Fly by night. And of course... Instead of putting some sort of plane or other things, they put this giant owl on there. And there are other birds that fly by the night. Why are they using an owl? Well, they have used different people to make their covers. One of uh, they used often. Um, and we need to look into this to whatever degree you care. As you said, I don't really consider this all that important, but people should know. Uh, because there's a lot of aspects here that are just so blatant. Because it doesn't. some people don't think they are. Well, how about a little song called Necro, Necrocon? And of course, uh, let me correct that. The Necromancer. That's not a con, a cult whatsoever. Well, a Necromancer is someone uh, who is a wizard who calls up and uses the dead. And they're trying to equate this with Hobbit and other things and so forth because, yeah, those are kind of occult books, the Hobbit. They're kind of metaphysical. They are sword and sorcery. So um, necromancy is a type of divination involved in the summoning of spirits of the deceased. Oh, that isn't very cool, right? I mean, these are the one of the things that are condemned by those people who are against it. And, of course, that's what their second album was called Caress of Steel, one of the title album, one of the title tracks of it. Well, I mean, it's pretty blatant here. Now, not only that, if you look at the actual um, album cover, and again, we're going to hopefully post these here so you can see them. Um, there is a necromancer on there. This is a wizard calling up the spirits of the dead. Oh, is that Disney? Are we talking about regular stuff here? Well, no. This is quite obviously an occult reference. And necromancy in general is thought to be a negative practice, even though as an occult scientist, I don't uh, believe that. Um, anybody talking to the dead would be called necromancy, but uh, that's kind of one of those bad terms. Um, but he is projecting his... Uh, what is floating in front of him? Let's see if I can, if I can get this up a little uh, stronger, or a little larger to look at it a little better. Well, the album is a clear example of a necromancer facing with his uh, facing a hovering pyramidal type structure is what it looks like, and he's got his left arm tucked in again, showing mostly the left arm of the left hand path. Now, floating in front of him is this kind of pyramid thing, but oddly enough, uh, there is a actual inverted cross coming down from one of the edges of the pyramids. Now, it's not crystal clear, but it looks to me like the uh, an inverted cross. It's pretty clear. He's a necromancer. This is a album that is based on this and these kind of occult practices. So here we go again. This album cover is loaded with occult symbolism from all over. I could go into many things. But I'm not going to bother spending hours and hours on these numbnuts that are nothing and uh, are basically more than one of these glam bands from the 70s. Um, so that's their album as well. We can go to their other album, which is one of their more curious ones as well, 2112. Now, why would you use that? What does 2112 mean? Now, on the cover, we have a flaming pentagram in the correct side up, meaning it's not satanic, but it has a circle around it. So you're pretty much saying that this is not a star. 
Stars don't have circles around them. You know, I've seen stars on so many different advertisements. You know, a lot of these goofballs that get tattoos. I'm going to get a star. I've never seen a star tattooed on anybody with a circle around it, unless it was some sort of a cult meeting. So, and it's also been stated that the reason why um, there would be, um, this came out this way is because the person who uh, printed this didn't understand that it was supposed to go inverted instead of in the position here. So that's some of the talk we just don't know. Uh, also on this album, the anthem song has backward masked uh, messages in it, which is interesting if you want to give that credit or not. I tend to give it credit, but it could be a weird anomaly. But having a basically a pentagram uh, on your front cover and the number 2112 is quite fascinating because 2112 adds up to 6. This is what all these people do. They constantly are caught on the 666 reality, and that is a way to do it. Quite strange. Why those numbers? So... Um, you could also say, because uh, Europeans, instead of putting the day first, uh, I should say the month first, as you do in the United States, they put the day first. So it could be the 21st day of December. Winter solstice. Well, that's very occult again. That's a pagan holiday generally. So why is that doing on it? We also have uh, on the same album, we have the, they, I don't know where the term star man came from. They're trying to lessen the fact saying that's a star and not a pentagram. But they have the star man standing in front of it or a man standing in front of a pentagram, which is circled, which means you are using the energy that way, with his left arm forward, left hand path again, people. You generally don't put your left hand forward. This is not even a normal movement since most people are right-handed. Why is it a naked man? Why is it at left? So Ozzy Osbourne has several pictures of people on it, and they all have their left hand extended. Again, pointing to the left-handed path, the satanic path, the dirty path. Because the left hand was your cleaning hand. You cleaned your bottom with it. There's also some statement that um, we could get endlessly into the curiosities of these strange shadings on the body. Well, why is the body shaded in that fact, uh, fashion? Well, there does seem to be some sort of images in there, and I'll let you play with that yourself. But again, it's a very odd. Why is there shading on this guy, period? Why isn't this just a nude guy? It's not the shading doesn't cover anything up. As a matter of fact, it makes it kind of look odd. So here again, very, very occult. But there is a kicker to all this, people, so make sure you stay tuned to me because there is an out-and-out out satanic symbol on their record that is irrefutable. So uh, we have that. So we've got right now um, the 2112 album. We have the Fly By Night. We have the Caresses. It's three of their albums. They made many. A very overt occult symbolism in it, which I feel is irrefutable. And there are other album covers, and they keep putting in this 2113, which is basically 9 uh, or 12, uh, 912, and it's on clocks. And other they keep using that, so that moves us away from the winter solstice back to the number six. Um, they had uh, one of the artists that did a lot of their covers, I don't know how many, but it Maybe the majority of them is a U Psy S Y M E, however that's pronounced. Um, he did a lot of these covers, and that cover, moving, um, what is it, moving pictures cover, has a very blatant image of Satan in flames looking up at a cross. <laughs> you know how this how they can deny their color. Of course, the band themselves has denied that they are Satanists and blame everybody else but themselves. Um, the usual story here. They're not going to come out and say that, particularly probably at that time, and particularly with so many other aspects. So, um, at that particular time. So, we don't know, but they're certainly putting out these kind of very blatant symbols that are not positive. Uh, what is a devil in flames looking up at a cross mean? 
uh, you know, we know what owls mean. We know what uh, 2112 means, flaming pentagrams. Very strange. Moving picture albums is very, very strange. And I could go through each and every one of these and probably find some reference. They also seem to have owls in most of their album covers. Now, why is that? Now, as much as we may think owls are positive, in the occult world, most owls are kind of looked down upon. Um, time stands still. We have that 2112 on the clock. So, uh, it, very, very interesting. So, we have um, the Clockwork Angels which uh, has a whole bunch of alchemy kimball, uh, symbols. And, of course, the, uh, the covers change. But I'm going to put that up as the main thing. The myths were occultists. So clockwork angels. And they're even talking angels. What does that mean? It has alchemy symbols, and most of these are satanic. As a matter of fact, the top symbol to the right, which is how people look. You look at the center of something, and then you start moving to the right because that's how you read has the symbol of the devil on it. The brimstone symbol. It's equated directly with Satan. So the um, Clockwork Ambles album, check that out. I don't see how we can possibly refute uh, that these guys uh, were putting that in there. So there's a constant um, uh, reference to these things. And um, I'm sure I could find all sorts of other things, but I'm not going to spend hours and hours going over this. But, you know, it's pretty confirmed. What confirmed me is I looked at all this stuff and you just go, eh, I don't know. 2112, that could mean something else. It doesn't, what it mean, you know, adding it together. But that's what you generally do. That's how numerology works. You add the numbers together. Two and one is three. Three and one is four. Four and two is six. This is what you do in numerology. Certainly guys that are into alchemy and all this other stuff would certainly be able to notice that. So uh, they certainly would know that. I don't know how is this you psi character um, knows or not. But And also the caress of steel is kind of quite an obvious that there's hovering pyramid with a inverted cross on it. Now, you may like their music, you may think it's okay, whatever it may be, but, you know, these are very, very blatant symbols, including, of course, um, the floating cross. There's another album with, actually, uh, the, the same guy on it, um, who's uh, standing on, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get this individual here, uh, he's got the same position, he's pointing his left hand out. Now, you normally don't point with your left hand. That's only if you're left-handed or on the left-handed path, the satanic path. So, I mean, all of this stuff is pretty blade. Now, whether they're hardcore blades, whether they played with this because they were stoned out of their mind taking hallucinogens or the influence from this other person, we just don't know. Uh, all these things are uh, up in the air because these kind of people don't like to come out and talk about it, and they're not going to readily admit it. Uh, that's just the way they are. But there certainly is a lot. But what does all that mean? Well, what it comes down to is their last album when they went on their last tour. I think they announced to everybody who they were and what it was about. So it's very, very clear on the Clock War, uh, Clock uh, Work Angels album, which has a clock there, and um, it has what they claim alchemy, alchemical symbols. Now, I'm not sure these are all chemical. I'm not going to look them up, but they kind of do. I mean, there are thousands of alchemical symbols. Why are they using the brimstone one? Brimstone is directly connected to Satan. They also have a whole bunch of other symbols on there, which conveniently have what appears to be upside-down crosses on them. Now, inverted crosses. Now, this may have been something that was commonly used in alchemy, and I'm assuming these are legitimate alchemical symbols. As I said, there's so many of them, and they're so diverse. You know, what's an alchemical symbol? Well, there are some standard ones because they recommended elements. Now, brimstone, which is now sulfur is what it's called. They used to call it brimstone, and it is associated with 
uh, the burning sulfuric fires of hell. And it's not at the top, because, you know, when you look at something, your eye, if you're looking at a clock, your, to your, your eyes tend to go to where the hands are, but they also drift up because you have to look where the hands position. So you start at the top and they go to the right like we're all trained to. So what is the first image to the right? It's sulfur, brimstone. And Satanists wear and use this symbol all the time as a way of denoting Satan. Oh, that's right. Doesn't mean nothing, right? Doesn't mean anything in the bigger picture, does it? No. Yes, it does. This is not an error. This guy who designed this, this you guy, knew exactly what he was doing. And it's very interesting that so many of these symbols have uh, what look like inverted crosses on them. Now, that's not technically what they are, but that's how you use things. You use these kind of crossy things to um, get your picture across. And there's, let's see, things that have crosses in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You could even say eight. That's almost all of these uh, are, have it. So you're looking at eight out of... Um, out of the full clock face there, which I'm not sure how many there are total there. What is that? 10, 12, whatever it is. Um, the whole idea is that um, very interesting that this would be their farewell album and they have this alchemicals. And we're so alchemical about them. Why, is they, why are they using these alchemical things if they're not really a cult? Why are they having a song with a necromancer? Why is the fact that they're... Um, uh, Caress of Steel album has a necromancer on the front of it and if that isn't enough which are considered evil practitioners um, there's a floating pyramidal type object in front of him that has an inverted cross on it not only that which is even the kicker of all the kickers of this is the fact that um, the Rush name on Rush Clark uh, Clockwork Angels, the U in Rush has a series of inverted crosses going down from it, trying to form a alchemical symbol. Mm. Well, not really. They're just stating that they are Satanists and always have been. So you need to know your symbolism, people. You need to know what's going on. And if you're going to be involved in something and claim that you're anti these things, uh, well, I think it's very comical that someone would be claim that they're anti-satanic when they're following a satanic group. Um, or are they? Are these people really anti-satanists or are they actually satanists? So I think we need to look at the fact that we can't allow ignorant people to give us information and tell us something else. But this is just the study of the entire rock and roll industry, which has been linked. Uh, even the more pop stars have all been linked uh, to these kind of symbols that are put out there. And, you know, it takes such an educated person to do stuff like this, such a person of knowledge to put together symbols and rituals that there's no way that this could possibly be a coincidence. They are, these things are highly planned out, highly written by very uh, devious, evil, and uh, pseudo-intelligent people who have put all this stuff together. And if you allow yourself to be a dupe, I can't believe that. They know what's being pet on these albums. They know the symbolism, which is throughout, and they're using owls and all sorts of other things that are linked to this. They know very well. And why would you use 2113, which seems to be something that they keep telling you, because in Clockwork Angels, this alchemical pseudo clock here is set on that same number. So this is something they keep pushing all the time. So are they trying to tell us winter solstice? I don't think so. They're trying to say 666. Six, six. That's what Rush is all about. Now, you may like their music. You may like to dress up like these uh, bizarre-looking freaks. Um, it's up to you. But you should know what these are. You should know what these images are. A flaming pentagram with encircled is an occult symbol. There's no way to think anything of it except that. Now, people don't have to do like Ozzy Eidborn and everybody else does, wearing 666, screaming in the devil's name. That doesn't necessarily in any way mean that 
they are not Satanists, that they're doing things at a lesser level. But there's no way that you can possibly um, think differently if you have any knowledge. They're always facing with the left arm and hand forward, emphasizing the left hand path. And as I said, the actual caress of steel, I mean, it looks like an inverted cross on that energy structure, that pyramidal type structure. I mean, it's hard not to see an inverted cross there. And what is that? So you're just not going to put an inverted cross there because that's going to probably lose you money. And what they want you to do is debate things like this and get caught up in the nonsense of all of this. But it's really irrefutable. The only person that wouldn't know this is kind of a dumb, ignorant person who's just following it through uh, or someone who's bought and paid who is trying to cover it up or something else. So uh, what is the reality here with people? Now, you may like them. Oh, I don't think so. Well, they don't have to, you don't have to be hit in the head with something uh, to know the real aspects of them. And the real aspects of them is that these are very um, problematical symbols. They're using the term necromancer. And I don't care um, what is taken from The Hobbit. It, the Hobbit is a huge series of books why take the necromancer from there? Why the person who calls up evil spirits? Why have everybody facing left arm and left forward and having these uh, semi-satanic uh, images there in terms of upside down crosses, which can be interpreted in different ways? Well, I'll tell you right now, it was deliberately these things were chosen and they deliberately want to argue the fact, oh, that's not pointing with your left arm constantly all of them do it and as you said this is like this is found in many other satanic albums where you'll see people on there pointing with their left arm or hand the left hand path and there's plenty of this the owl is not seen as a positive image it's seen as a negative image and they use it all over the place not to mention they have a flaming cross with the devil staring at it in one of their albums I mean, it's pretty clear. And their farewell album, yes, yes, Clockwork Angels, has the uh, actual brimstone image, the sign of Satan, right there staring you in the face. No, I don't know, man. I don't know. And these are people, and as I said, there are some people out there who claim to be researchers of satanic practices and don't get it. Well, people who did get it, like Maury Terry, stated it in his book, The Ultimate Evil, uh, that this was one of the many satanic bands. And you know what? He's 100% correct. And if you want to follow fools that tell you different, well, do it at your own peril, people. This is not a joke. Until next time.